Wakey, wakey. Where am I? Oh. You know why you're here. I don't know. Come on, you know what you did. If you're not gonna say it, oh, I'm oh gonna- God, Okay, 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 okay. Well, well, I was thinking to maybe add a DLC to my game and maybe some microtransactions. Okay, go on. Elaborate. I was also thinking of maybe adding a premium version and a non-premium version. Cool, but you haven't told me what's the worst thing that you did. Oh, gosh. Uh, fine, I'll say it. Uh, I was thinking maybe we could add, like, NFTs to our game, maybe? See, that's where you cross the line. Ah! Loot boxes? Hate them. Shop that show a timer on every item? Hate them too. Battle passes? Eh, they're alright. JK, hate them as well. But today, I'm not here to necessarily bash on the multi-million dollar companies for utilizing microtransactions with a return of more than $4 billion on average. No, I'm here to have an open discussion on what is the problem and impact on gameplay when games give rewards. And of course, so maybe you can have a better understanding in games that you play and make. So, what are rewards? Some may claim that it may be the best thing ever, cause, you know, in the end in life, it's not about the journey, it's about the destination. <laughs> Many psychologists categorize motivation in two forms. Intrinsic motivators and extrinsic motivators. The difference between these two types is crucial for your understanding of the problems with rewards in games. Extrinsic motivation is best illustrated by this chubby chocobo right here. That cake is the extrinsic motivator for the chubby chocobo to fly towards a direction. The motivation is entirely different from the behavior itself. You know, we do push-ups and pull-ups not because we like the motion of actually going up and down, but because we want to get healthier and look better. The same can be said about how we do certain homework for a grade, even though if you're watching this, you're probably a nerd. You know, many of us go to work for a paycheck, not simply of doing the work for the sake of working. I love doing taxes. <laughs> Here's a horrible external motivator for you. If this video makes more than 2000 likes, I will wear a maid costume for the next devlog. In all these cases, we are doing something that is not for the reason of that doing something, but for the sake of doing it for something else. And that is extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation, however, is when we do something because we get fulfillment and satisfaction purely from doing something. Oh. Mihaly... I can't pronounce his name. This psychologist <laughs> popularized the concept of flow, and he states that intrinsic motivation as autotelic, which is a word that comes from Greek, which literally means self-goal. The goal of doing an activity is to do the activity. We listen to music because it's enjoyable, we read books because we like the experience, and of course, we play games because... Ah! 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 <clears throat> right, so what's my problem with rewards? I actually did a dissertation on gamification and I used to be a huge pro gamification advocate which makes me look like a real f***ing idiot right now but for those who don't know, gamification is a popular trend that can largely be boiled down to putting external motivators such as points, badges, golden stars, honor points for your underpaid and valued workers at Blizzard Money. instead of a paycheck so that Bobby Kotick can finally buy his fourth yak. You know, any high roller programs. Gamification is nothing new and one could debate that even great programs in school are ways to gamify behavior, which is way, way before even gamification the term was even coined. Now, in games, the primary goal is to have fun. The designer hopes that the players does that through interacting with the game system in a particular way. Some designers choose to add external motivators to guide players' behavior. For instance, getting an achievement for finishing a tutorial. Hey, what's that? You guys tracking my every move now? Or getting a skin for using all five combos in a consecutive time. At the same time, the designer would usually want the player to be intrinsically motivated in the game itself. After all, like, What's the point of playing the game if the game is not fun or rewarding within itself?
In 1973, long before gamification was a popularized buzzword, Mark Lepper and his colleagues conducted an experiment to find out how external motivators affected internal motivators. They made three groups of four to five year old school students into different classrooms. One classroom was labeled as the expected reward group and was told that if they chose to draw during playtime, they would receive a good player certificate award. The second group was called unexpected reward group. They were not told of the reward in advance, but anyone who drew would receive a reward. And finally, the last group was the control group. They were free to do whatever they pleased and received no rewards regardless. Now, get this. After two weeks of investigating their behavior and time spent on drawing, the first reward group only spent 8% of their time drawing. They drew as fast as they could to get the drawing done for the reward. The second group spent 18% of their time drawing and the third group spent 16% of the time, which both groups were higher than the one who knew that they would receive a reward. So what does that tell us about games and extrinsic reward? Well, it turns out that unless they were being rewarded for it, they no longer wanted to draw. There was an even more ridiculous case with Pizza Hut and American schools. There was this sponsored event by Pizza Hut where students would receive free pizzas mm. by reading. However, sooner than expected, they realized that this led to students choosing to read smaller and shorter books and fly through them without even being able to answer basic questions about their book that would prove for their comprehension. The students just wanted the points so they can get free pizza. And it significantly decreased the actual amount of reading time students did outside of school. Now I guess you understand that sometimes extrinsic motivators can actually dampen the intrinsic motivation for a task. Now, here is something I experience in games with battle passes. I often play Valorant with my good friend Sturgus and we are super casual, you know, playing only for one hour after work before bed. We played the game so much that we thought, hey, why not buy battle pass? At first, it was fun and it definitely felt good getting those cosmetics and doing objectives. But the more we played, our reasoning of play started to change. My mindset instead of, hey, let's play because it's fun, to let's play because we gotta level up our battle passes. So you know, we aren't wasting our money for paying the battle pass. And naturally, the more I focused on the battle pass, the less fun I had. Because I felt like it was more of a chore. I had to get it done today or I'm gonna waste XP. Of course, now this doesn't apply for everyone, but let me know if you had any similar experiences with your intrinsic motivation getting dampened by extrinsic mechanic from a game. As a designer, I believe it's super important to always make sure players are intrinsically motivated to play. Not by some stupid NFT monkey JPEG that you can unlock by playing a game. Honestly, like, I think that attracting players through NFTs is probably the most embarrassing tactic you can have as a so-called game designer. You are by default asking players to play your game for the wrong reasons. Games are supposed to be fun. You shouldn't play a game because it's making you 0 0.001 whatever currency. I love NFT. So but you know, I'm I'm not telling you how to waste your time. I just think it's scummy and lame. Now enough with that rant. Here are two pretty popular ways to enhance the motivation of your game. One is called the goal gradient effect. Goal gradient effect is saying that if the player knows that they're getting close to a goal, they're more likely to try to get it. The more you display the progress of the goal to the player, the more likely they will be willing to keep trying. This is used in Cuphead. I quite like this one because it's still intrinsically motivating the player to do something in a more organic way. And I have also used it in my own game, Tattle Tales. Now, the one I like less is Scarcity. This is super common in microtransaction stores where you see the time and expiry date of the store. Players will value items more if they believe they are in limited supply. Some examples are shops in Valorant for being time sensitive, Amazon showing how many products are left in stock, Steam showing sales that is gonna run out of the date, etc. I don't like this one that much. Why? Well, because most of them are fake. 
scarcity in microtransactions is artificially created. I feel like I'm being lied to every time I see it. Because it's not in actual limited supply, but you're just getting that illusion of it being in the limited supply. And uh, that's it. Let me know if you found this insightful. What is your opinion on rewards in games? If you have any interesting game examples that utilizes rewards in an interesting way, please leave a comment as I personally found this topic super interesting and I will definitely be super careful with adding motivators in my own game that we're currently working on, Penny and the Lost Voice. But that's all for me today. Let me know if you enjoyed these type of analysis videos and uh, I'll see you next time with the devlog. Take care. Bye bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>